on the fourth day of October, Halloween gave to me four zombie bulls, three haunted mirrors, two monster houses, and a fog that makes it hard to see. Well, hey there, and happy October 4th is where we are. Still the first week of October, uh, but but halfway through, a little over halfway through now. So uh, we have we started with the fog. Uh, we we did Monster House as a bit of, of a palate cleanser, a little something fun, you know. Uh, we're, we're still having a good time here. Then uh, Oculus, which uh, still scares the shit out of me. I think that movie is terrifying. <laughs> And I and is it the the chewing the the light bulb maybe maybe so I wanted to pivot to something that was a little bit different uh, a little bit more fun a little less savage but also kind of retain some of the same ideas and so uh, our fourth day of Halloween is 1985's House uh, directed by uh, Steve Miner who had done. Oh, Friday the 13th, 2 and 3, uh, by this point, I do believe, uh, was originally a story by Fred Decker, who would do uh, Night of the Creeps, which is one of my favorite movies, and uh, also uh, Ethan Wiley did the screenplay, and I actually had an interview with Ethan Wiley, oh geez, maybe 20 years ago, about the movie House. And uh, one of the things I said that, that, that's always stuck in my craw is one of the things I like about the movie House is that once the haunting begins, there it's kind of all rules are off, you know. Um, the there there is a a freewheeling nature to the haunting and how it goes about torturing Roger Cobb uh, that I really admire. And when I asked. Ethan Wiley about this and I said hey man uh, one of the things I like is how you know there there are no rules in this house and he was like oh no no there are very specific rules and uh, but I never got what those were and he never elucidated on it and I felt like you know at the time it was inappropriate to ask follow up questions like you're a liar your honor objection have the have this screenwriter give me the answers that I desire um, that said um, what is House? House is uh, a movie from that grand age of, of horror when, you know, if you had a crazy idea, somebody would probably give you a couple million dollars to make it. And that's a that's a good feeling. So um, House stars William Cat, who is the greatest American hero, um, who is divorced from uh, his wife, played by Kay Lenz, who has been in. Oh, geez, everything. A lot, a lot of television in particular. Um, but also a lot of voice work and, and things like that. But anyway, so she's Roger's somewhat estranged wife. Uh, throughout the film, we discover that she has been... Um, uh, they, they, they've divorced because she's an actress. She's kind of moving on with her life after uh, the disappearance of their son at, at this family home where Roger's aunt uh, at the beginning of the film... Uh, is found having uh, committed suicide, ha- has hung herself in the house. And so Roger, in an attempt to kind of get his life together, decides to move into the, this old house and uh, work on his memoir, a one-man story of one soldier's memories of Vietnam or some shit like that. And so he starts having these flashbacks uh, in, in throughout the film to move uh, to... Two scenes with him and Richard Mall, aka uh, television's night night court's bull, uh, but you've seen him in a million things. Richard Mall was a very famous actor in the eighties. Uh, so it, it's sort of you know this guy theoretically breaking down, like his sanity is kind of crumbling. Norm from Cheers uh, plays his neighbor uh, Harold. And the whole thing is played real tongue in cheek. It's it's very silly. It's very fun, but there are some good performances. I think William Cat is actually really good in it. And you know he he's still working. Of course, he he does again a lot of television at this point. Older gentleman now, 
But uh, I always thought he was quite good, and I think he's very good in this. I think I think he gets to um, the emotion of, of a lot of these scenes in ways that I didn't quite expect out of a movie called House from 1985. There are a couple of scenes. There's one in Vietnam in particular where it's like, I don't think anybody comes off well in this scene. Some of the performances are not great. But, uh, so anyway, he moves into this house. All hell breaks loose. And everything from a haunted swordfish flapping on the wall to a haunted garden tools chasing him through the house to a two mutant, like, garbage kale, pale kids uh, grabbing a kid and yanking him up through the chimney. Like, all that stuff kind of happens in this movie. It feels really weird and, and and like, this movie is kind of the Wild West of, of haunted house movies where just weird shit happens. And case in point, there is a point where Roger Cobb is sitting at his uh, 1980s word processor, giant ass thing that it is, and is uh, working on his memoir. The television's on in the background, and he uh, he uses a remote control to turn the television off. And then there's a like flickering image of his son laughing in one of the windows. And he hits the remote control again, and he turns the the vision off. And it's that kind of shit where I'm like, "What is he? Is he just turning off his imagination? Was that a real ghost? What the fuck is happening in this movie?" And it's rare that I find a movie that I feel that level of like, "What in the fuck is going on?" and still really respond to it. And I and I actually think that House is a, kind of a wonderful little movie. It. I, again, you know, it's 1985. There's very little CGI, although there's some, uh, there is a little bit of that kind of thing. There's some camera triggery involving this winged thing that's got a shotgun in in his mirror. You really just have to watch it to to find out. But uh, aside from you know some of that dodgy uh, visual effects work, there is a, a shit ton of practical effects work that is really kind of outrageous and fun and and. Like, it's big and it's bold. There's one creature in particular that's sort of this monsterization of his wife that is really weird looking and fun and has this crazy voice that taunts him. Like, he's dead, Roger. You know, it's it's really something. House is a, a movie that I've gone back to a number of times. Uh, I think most people who have seen it really like it. And if you haven't seen it, I don't know. Maybe it's something you got to kind of grow up with. Something I, I've learned in watching um, some of these James Bond movies of late for Pick Six movies is that I didn't grow up with those movies, so I don't have a lot of you know inherent fondness for them. And so when I watch them as an adult, they come across as really silly and largely boring and stuff like that. And I wonder if House would come across to a new user, <laughs> a new viewer like that. So we'll, uh, I don't know. Yeah, you let me know. So, um, anyway, a couple of other words about, about house. This is just personal musing at this point, but there was a, a very influential movie review for me happened in an old horror zine called the horror show. And it was around the, that era, 1985, I probably would have been 12 or 13 years old at the time. Um, and I had a subscription to the horror show, which was an oversized magazine that would come in with short stories by, oh, you know, like Stephen King and Joe Lansdale and people like that. Uh, some of the splatter, uh, punk writers at the time, uh, were, were kind of cutting their teeth in, in magazines like that. And it was really interesting because it was, uh, it was it wasn't Fangoria because it wasn't super glossy and there weren't a lot of pictures. There was some hand drawn art more so than, than photographs. And, um, it was just, it was filled like holding, it was like holding some, you know, college students basement zine from the sixties or something. Um, it, it was slightly more professional than that, but not by much. It felt it felt uh, artisanal, <laughs> you know, to, to borrow a, a word popular today. Um, and it and it felt like it was made by people who loved horror movies and stories and books. And 
uh, and wanted to celebrate them and talk about them. And, and it's all the stuff we do in podcasting. Uh, you know, I, I honestly think that podcasts have become, you know, the zines of the future um, where, uh, God willing, you have a perspective on something or are able to kind of share it with the world in a way that you couldn't before. Anyway, I so uh, they had a review of House in there. And it was a, a fairly positive review, as I recall. And But the way that they put the ending, because the ending of this movie is kind of abrupt and it feels really, it feels really easy compared to everything that's happened prior to the events of, uh, you know, prior to the, the resolution of the film. Um, but the, the way that they phrased it in the horror show review was um, the movie, like all nightmares, eventually ends. And I always thought that was a really graceful way of putting it. Of like, hey, the ending is probably not the part of this film that everyone is going to walk away from thinking about and and uh, extolling the virtues of, of the filmmaking and so forth. It does. It ends kind of abruptly. It ends suddenly. Um, you know, it does resolve itself. It's not like it's an open-ended uh, sort, of, sort of ending. But... It just doesn't feel like it totally pays everything off in the film. That said, uh, I think that it is a a very fun movie. There's there's not a ton of you know gratuitous language and and violence and that kind of thing. Like it, there's some scary stuff, but it's an R rated film that it's kind of a soft R, I would argue. And I only say that because, you know, some people are, are thinking about watching movies like this with their kids. And if you watch House with your kids, it's a little scary. It is an R-rated film. Um, but it's not crazy. Uh, I'm trying to think of, of anything that might get in the way. Like Oculus. Oculus, it, weirdly, is Oculus rated R? We'll have to verify. Oculus may not be rated R. And I think that is, far and away, the more viscerally frightening film. Um, whereas I think House is just a, a really good time. Uh, v- confirmed Oculus was rated R, uh, which which makes sense. O- Oculus is the harder R uh, of these two. So anyway, um, House is fantastic. It's it's a lot of fun. It's a good time. If you want something uh, that's a little uh, on the sillier side, it's going to give you some laughs. It's a good party movie because there's a lot of what the fuckery in it. Um, but it, it, it holds together pretty well. Like even the, what the fuck stuff isn't what the fuck, like, uh, you know, demon house or some shit like that, where it is, you're, you're watching it for the craziness and, and the irrationality of the movie. There's really nothing irrational in house. It, it all comes together. It all makes a narrative sense. Ultimately, even if I disagree with Ethan Wiley, the writer that, there are hard and fast rules within the house. I think the house, once you're inside, just anything is possible. Um, that is my own personal theory. You develop your own personal theories of 1985's house directed by Steve Miner. And uh, and get back to me. Let me know um, what how you are finding this Halloween season. Uh, unlike any other, uh, to be sure. And uh, I got to tell you, I'm I'm excited. We are closing in on the first week of movies. Uh, as you might have noticed, we are doing a bit of a haunting uh, theme for really kind of the first half of uh, of the the month. Um, so look, don't don't think that haunting haunted shit is going anywhere just yet. We have got plenty of haunting left to do. Uh, whether it's haunted ships and fogs, uh, monster houses, haunted mirrors, haunted houses, we're we're going to cover our bases here. We're going to try to cover everything that you can potentially haunt. Uh, and it turns out it's mostly houses. But there's some great haunted house stuff coming up. Um, and and I'm excited. Like, I, I, you know, obviously I'm a bit partial to it. But after we get on with all this haunting stuff, we're going to do uh, some other themes and some other little tidbits here and there leading up to uh, the, the final three of the season in which, uh, you know, we're, we're doing some traditional stuff and, and maybe some not so traditional stuff. So um, anyway, as always, uh, thank you for listening. Uh, I hope you are enjoying the Halloween season. I'm, I couldn't be more excited 
to be in the middle of talking about these movies and watching these movies and, and talking to you guys about all these movies. I mean, it is everything I love. So uh, thank you for, again for listening. Um, be sure you are subscribing to all the shows on legionpodcasts.com. Uh, rate and review. That helps those shows a lot. Uh, obviously, this is not a show you have to rate and review. Um, but if you would like to rate and review the main Legion podcast feed, uh, feel free to do that. This is Hey, this is just for funsies. This is just you and me having a good time. Um, to that end, let me know what kind of good time you're having by dropping me a line. Uh, you can reach me at Bo, that is B-O, at legionpodcasts.com. Uh, make the subject line Halloween. That way I know that uh, you are emailing me with uh, some some juicy tidbits about you know what you're watching, how you celebrate the season, what you think about some of the movies I've discussed, what what are some of the movies that you always watch at this time of year, that kind of thing. Let's all just uh, you know, in the midst of a shitstorm <laughs> of a 2020, I especially want to be able to enjoy Halloween with all of you. And and so uh, you know, if you got the time, take uh, 30 seconds and drop me a line at that uh, bow at Legion Podcasts.com. Subject line Halloween. Tell me something about your Halloween. Tell me about what you're watching. Tell me how you're doing. And uh, and we will do more. Um, again, no spoilers. If you want to know what is happening on day five of uh, October, then you just have to come back on October 5th and, uh, and listen along. And you'll hear what I've been watching. And, uh, and uh, you know, stuff from you guys. Uh, if and... Uh, you know, you want to share some of your watches and or Halloween traditions. So that is enough out of me for now. Um, have a great October 4th. Uh, I'm sure you will. And uh, join me tomorrow uh, for more of all this nonsense and, and more 31 days of Halloween. So uh, thanks, everyone. Have a very, very wonderful day and keep it spooky. Spooky.